In this video we take a look at the Asset Manager. When we open Asset Panel for the first time, we will see two buttons – Create Category and Refresh. We do not have anything to refresh, so we use Create Category. A dialog message pops up, where we are offered to give the name for the new category. Let's call it Rings. After creating first category, we see Asset Manager interface. It is divided into parts. Categories, containing list of all categories and menu with related tools. And Assets. There you can see empty Asset List menu, Asset Tools and Import Asset button. Now let's create our first asset. Asset can be an object or group of objects of any type, with modifiers and materials. Select an object or group of objects and click on the plus button. In the pop-up dialog message specify the asset name and confirm. Our asset added to the library and we can see it in the assets list. To add the asset to the scene, select it from the list and use import asset. Note that asset imported to the location of 3D cursor and just like gems, in edit mode imported asset duplicated to selected faces. But this works only if asset consists of one object. If there are two or more objects in the asset, it will be imported in the original coordinates that were used when adding asset in the library. Back to our asset. When adding an asset to the library, asset preview is taken from the viewport and in our case the preview came out quite poor. We can fix this by adjusting viewport position to have a better look at the model and using replace preview. If you want more control over the composition and frame feeling, in that case it is more convenient to make preview from the camera view. So create camera and switch to camera view. In view panel activate lock camera to view. This allows you to control camera position with viewport controls. Then change render resolution. The resolution itself doesn't matter, it will be 256 pixels no matter what you set. Just make sure the proportions are one to one, so camera view would be accurate. Now, how to add a complete product as an asset? The sequence is identical. Make the viewport closer to the model, or in this case, set up the camera. Do not forget to select objects, only selected objects added to the library. Click on the plus button and give the name to your asset. As you can see, selection outline presented in the preview. To avoid it, activate only render option in display panel. Let's add another asset. Variation of the same ring with minor changes. I will set different color for central stone and remove settings from the sides. Don't forget to select objects and activate only render option. And give it similar name. Now there are three assets in our library. Suppose we need to make edits to our asset. Change rings shape or thickness. Reduce the size of the central stone. These changes do not affect product appearance significantly so we might not need to change Asset Preview. In that case, select objects and use Replace Asset. That way we completely replace the asset without changing the preview. We can also rename the asset if needed. To remove asset from the library, press on the minus button. By the way, after this it is not possible to use undo to restore the removed asset. You can't restore it from the recycle bin either since it's deleted from the disk. So be careful. Now I demonstrate how you can use Asset Manager. As an example I will use Small Asset Library, which I quickly put together specifically for this demonstration. Gems category. You can store models of alternative gem cuts and since they have gem identifiers they will be recognized by the add-on just like gems created by Make Gem tool. You can collect your own gems library if standard GeoCraft set is not sufficient. Parts category. Here I placed three sockets, Pattern and Shank. 
But look at the first three assets. This is exactly what I was talking about in previous video about Prong tool. When you have a central stone in your product, it is most likely placed in socket designed specifically in product style, which is out of scope of Prong tool, but falls within the scope of Asset Manager. You model complicated socket once, make it as editable as possible so that it's easy to change thickness or number of prongs, add it to asset library, and when time comes, reuse it. Rings category. Here I placed complete products. I also made them easily editable. So these assets allow me to quickly change the size of the ring, thickness, patterns, and the number of gemstones. When your library grows to size when it's difficult to find an asset, for that I created functionality to search asset by name. By the way, note that I added the size of the ring to the asset name, which in my opinion makes it easier to find it. For example, if I enter only the size, list will display only rings with that size. Now I demonstrate how you can use asset library in your work. I import the ring and replace shank with another one, with more interested shape. I import the new shank and change its size from 15 to 17 mm and place it in more appropriate position. Also adjust width. To duplicate shank to the opposite side of the ring, I create an empty object and use it as a pivot point in mirror modifier. Now I add socket for the central stone and the stone 4 mm in size. Adjust socket size to stone size and plant them in the ring. I will use boolean union operation to fuse parts together. Bmesh solver can handle that, so I switch to more stable carve solver, but it takes more time to process. And a few moments later... Boolean operation finished. Next, I unite socket with the ring. Then I create the cutter for the stone and subtract it from the ring. And the last step, check for solid. No errors detected. And like that, in few minutes I assembled jewelry product ready for 3D printing. For now, let's abstain from criticism of my product, since currently my library is very limited in the number of assets. But I hope I managed to demonstrate that the asset manager can be useful in your work. At first, effect of using Asset Manager may not be so obvious, but in case when you do not have the right socket, pattern or shank, you model it and add it to the library, and eventually your library becomes more and more extensive. And in one day you may not need to model, you will assemble your product as a puzzle constructor. Of course, this will not be possible with all products. Some products have more monolithic structure, 
but even then you can make a set of templates of different shapes so you won't have to start your model from scratch. In a render category I placed environment, light sources and materials. And here you might have a question. How material asset have cycles render result in the preview if add to library uses only viewport? It will be better if I just show you. I use the open library folder. Asset library folder will open up. And here we see that categories are just folders. Assets are blend files and asset previews is just an image file in PNG format. So you can easily replace generated preview image with any other image you want. And that what I did with material asset preview. By the way, asset manager in the current state does not work with materials. And this is just an object asset with material assigned to it. It is used this way. Import the object, delete it and assign the remaining material to another object. So yeah, this is just a dirty hack, if you really need to have a material asset. And of course in the future version of Jewelcraft I will implement proper material workflow for Asset Manager. Now let's do a quick render using available assets. Import product. The backdrop. Light source. I duplicate lights a few times and place them around the product. Let's see what we've got and find out that I forgot about materials. Use previously imported gold material. And do not forget about smooth shading. Well, here is the result of our quick render. I used only 10 samples for render. It won't be enough to get rid of the noise from diffuse materials. That requires at least 100 samples. But for demonstration purpose it's enough. You also can set a path to custom library folder in the add-on preferences. For example, set it to your Dropbox and have your asset library always in sync. On that note, I want to conclude this video. Thank you for your attention. Download link in the description. Use Jewelcraft 2, report bugs and suggest improvements.